Hey guys, Chris from Provo Beast Audio Installation, and today we're doing an unboxing of this Kenwood Double Den Aftermarket Radio. This is the DDX26BT Double Den DVD Radio. Um, this radio includes Bluetooth as well as DVD, CD, AM, FM, USB, AUX, and a few other odds and ends as well. In this unboxing, we're going to get this all pulled apart for you to show you all the bits and pieces that it comes with, and we're going to get it booted up for the first time here on the bench as well. Let's go ahead and get started. Have our microphone. We have our parking brake wire, we have our main wiring harness, and Kenwood is some, one of the few companies that still print full manuals. You don't have to go download them. Also comes with all your mounting hardware in this package as well. And finally, we've got our radio in there. Okay, so we got this radio all pulled apart here. We have still hard buttons, which is super nice. We have our main home button slash power button. We got a menu button, or if you hold it, you can turn on or off the display. We got our voice activation slash telephone Bluetooth button. We have volume up and down here as well. And then finally, if you want a quick, quick shortcut to your camera, you can press that button, or if you hold it down, it's for attenuation or kind of a mute, so you can mute your volume. You also have your disk drive up here above for CDs and DVDs. So this is a standard doubled in size, plenty of mounting options, and again, hardware is provided by Kenwood, your mounting screws. Now you'll need to purchase the dash kit based on whatever vehicle this will be installed into. Now here on the back of the radio, starting on the left hand side, we have our um, satellite XM input. You'd have to buy the separate adapter in case you want to um, bring that feature into this radio. You have your main harness input as well as a factory little fuse there, a little 10 amp. On this side here, on the right side of the heat sink, we have our parking brake wire. Now, of course, you'll need to connect this if you're interested in having the DVD function to work properly. You'll also have a reverse input. Now, this will be needed if you're doing a backup camera. This wire is important because it'll indicate when the radio needs to go into the reverse mode and display the camera when the car is backing up. If you don't hook that up, that function really just doesn't work right. Now looking here a little bit closer here in the way, this is obviously the USB cable. And the nice thing is it comes with plenty of wire. Um, it also indicates it's five volt at one and a half amps. Now looking here, this is your mic input. Uh, this is obviously for the included Bluetooth microphone. You'll need to hook that up if you're doing a Bluetooth call or using voice activation and you want the other party to hear you. Now this is your AV input. This could be considered as an aux input, but it's also video in this input as well. You can pick up the specific Kenwood harness adapter that allows you to have a video input in case you're interested in something like that. Now here, this top yellow, this is your video output in case you have a flip down monitor in the back or headrest monitors. You have your reverse camera input, RCA right there. And then you have three sets of pre outs for um, amplification in case you're adding an external amplifier. You have front, rear, and sub. Big input here, this is your AM, FM, um, standard Motorola input jack here. Let's go ahead and get this powered up so you can see the boot up menu and some of the features in the operating system. Okay, perfect. So it's gonna take you through the initial setup phase. Um, we can do demo on or off. Now with the rear camera, if you know you're already setting up a rear camera, you can go ahead and put that on. Again, it's important that you hook up that purple and white wire on the back of the Kenwood in order for the interruption to work correctly. Now you can set guidelines on or off and actually adjust those guidelines if you wish. Go ahead and hit back. User customized. Cool thing is, even from the get-go, you can already customize your background. You can upload your own image as well. And then viewing angle. You can also adjust at what point you're looking at the radio itself. So if this radio is sitting pretty low in the dash or pretty high in the dash or depending on the angle here, you can adjust that just so it looks proper. Go ahead and hit finish. We haven't set up our clock here, but you obviously can. You can synchronize that clock and get that all set up. Now this is your main home screen here. 
obviously if you hit your nine dots there up in the left hand corner it gives you all the inputs and accessories here you got your radio and this is your am and fm and hit our home again now your Sirius XM, that input on the back of the radio does require an adapter to make XM work. We can post down in the description that information in the event you're interested in getting that set up. Now this is to your disk drive. Both CDs and DVDs work in that slot as well. You have your USB input. Remember your USB is that long cable here on the back that you'd hook up. Now we have your iPod, generally that's based on the USB input connected and the type of source that's playing. So if you have an Apple device, um, usually you'd go to that device first. If you have an Android device, you'd go to that second there. Bluetooth audio, because this is equipped internally with Bluetooth, you can actually click in there. Now we don't have an audio device set up yet. Going back to our system settings, that AV input, if you remember, there's that 3.5 millimeter jack on the back of the radio that is labeled AV input. Not only is it for an auxiliary input for sound, but it also can accommodate video as well. Now it says parking off because it does require the parking brake wire to be connected in order for this function to work. That's something that you'll have to remember when you install this radio. You have to hook up the parking brake. Finally, we got Pandora here on the screen. We can hit that arrow to go to more sources. Obviously, we have Spotify, our heart radio, and then standby. Basically, we'll put the radio in, in not fully off. It doesn't shut down the radio, but it turns all sources off. We can go into the gear icon, which is your system settings. Now we have audio, we have display, we have input and system. First thing here is you have your equalizer here. Now you got your 13 band equalizer. You can actually adjust and readjust and set it exactly the way you like. You can also adjust your subwoofer level. Now the cool thing is it also has preset equalizer. Now under sound effect you can adjust the loudness of the radio, basically the internal built-in amplifier. You can give it a little bit more output. You got your bass boost here your drive equalizer, and then other adjustments as needed based on your liking. We got fader and balance here, just depending on where you'd like to fade forward or back or balance left and right. We got your speaker crossovers here. Now this is important in the event you're running certain speakers that require certain um, certain crossovers just so you're not sending the wrong frequencies to your speakers causing them to distort. This is a super helpful menu to allow you to set that up. You can also set up the size of car and the speaker location here as well. And you can set up those crossover specifically, which is pretty cool based on the location and the size of the speaker. And then you also have time alignment, which is pretty cool. In time alignment, it allows you to place um, certain emphasis based on where you're sitting in the vehicle and then from there it'll, it guesstimates or calculates the distance between those speakers to your ears. And then volume offset allows you to adjust each specific source input volume in case you want some sources louder than others. Next thing we'll go to display. Now you have dimmer here specifically if you want it set to auto when you turn on your headlights automatically um, you'll need to hook up the dimmer wire in your wiring harness there it's generally that um, orange white wire now if you don't have that hooked up or don't have that input you can manually set the dimmer on or off user customized this is kind of cool because you can customize the color you can customize the background like i said even in the beginning when you first boot up you can even add your own image as needed Set your clock. Again, this is back if you want to set up the demo mode on or off. How you set up your scroll. You can customize the home screen depending on where you want certain icons. Screen adjustment. You can always adjust the screen and the brightness of the screen as well. Viewing angle. You saw that at the beginning. We'll go to input. Now, if you want your camera rear input on and adjust the guidelines again, just like how that initial boot up offered, you can go back in that setting in case you need to make any adjustments. And then finally, we're gonna go to our system. It's defaulted to English, but if you need to change it to another language, you can. Again, you can adjust your clock there. You got your smartphone set up. In your smartphone setup menu here, 
you can identify what type of connection it is what type of phone that you use now Bluetooth setup that's an important one um, if you want to go ahead and pair a phone um, you can go ahead and do so through the device list basically the first best step if you're pairing your phone to this radio is go ahead in your phone itself in the settings under Bluetooth in the available devices you should be able to see this unit available you can go ahead and hit pair on your phone and it'll indicate on this radio if you'd like to pair with that phone and you'd indicate yes system memory you got your serial number you can adjust the the touch panel in case you have to recalibrate the the, the screen itself you got some basic system information licenses everything else that you'll need so that um, is a quick just overview of the settings option here in the main home screen and finally the now playing if we were playing a um, a source of some kind you'd hear it you can quickly click on that and it'll just take you to whatever source is currently active providing sound now if you hit this menu button there what it's going to do is just give you quick adjustments here at the bottom if you need to eject the disc that's currently in the drive you can do so you can adjust your screen again you can just turn off the display if needed you can quickly jump to the camera if your camera is set up your backup camera um, again you can go to your quick settings menu there's another option to get there and then current source so if you want to jump to if you're currently on the radio you can do that again you can also do that same function by just hitting the now playing if you hit the TEL button or the telephone button, once you have a phone paired, it'll take you to the Bluetooth menu so you can initiate a call. Also volume up, volume down, and finally if you hit that cam button, it'll take you to your backup camera. Obviously we don't have a camera in, uh, set up, but uh, if you actually want to know how to set up a camera with one of these, we have an excellent video. Um, we'll throw a card up above or a link down in the description, and we'll show you the, some of the best ways to get a camera set up with your aftermarket radio. Now this radio does not include Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. It's a great budget option or budget version. We're actually going to be installing this in an FJ Cruiser. And if you want to see that video, we'll have a card in the video above as well as a link down in the description below. Um, you can see us put this unit in action and get this all wired up in a full system upgrade in an FJ Cruiser. Well, that's about it for this video. Thanks again for checking us out. Be sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and we will certainly see you in the next video.